All right. Good morning. All right. Good morning. We made it. We We're made here. it. We're here. Uh, for those of you don't know, uh, for those me, you don't know me, uh, I'm not a known excitable person. So this is me elated. I am as, as excited as I can person, possibly so this is me be right now to be standing here. I am here. as excited uh, as I can possibly be right now to be standing here. I also violated my uh, cardinal rule of not having coffee before I give a talk. So rule of not having coffee before I give a talk. So strap in, right? I want to start today. I want to start today with a sincere thanks, with a sincere thanks to John, Nicole, to John, Nicole, the entire staff here at 360. I've been here many, many times. Many, many times. Ordinarily, I say thank you for being on the stage. This year, I'll say thank you. That there is a stage. I don't. We, we can't even begin to imagine, John, how much work it was to make this happen. Last year, you had an incredible virtual show. We really enjoyed ourselves. But uh, this year, you know, we're actually here in person, and that makes a big difference uh, for the community. It's a sign of your commitment to the community, so thank you. Uh, while I'm talking about this room, I want to thank everyone who's in this room with me as well. Thank you for coming here. If for nothing else, selfish reasons, I don't have to give this talk inside an empty room. It's very nice to have faces looking back at me. So thank you. Thank you for being here. You've come here at some personal risk, let's face it. Uh, and we really appreciate that. Everyone here appreciates it. And finally, to all of our folks out there in uh, internet land, uh, out there streaming the events live worldwide, uh, this is exciting. I've never done a talk show like, in front of a live studio audience with actual people watching around the world. So thank you for being here, showing your commitment as well, taking the time out of your busy schedules. Uh, you couldn't make it here in person, but you came anyway. And I, we really, everyone here in the room wants you to feel as welcome uh, as we do. And we want you to have uh, get as much out of the incredible lineup of content we've got this week. So thank you very much. We are here today to talk about community. And given the last year and a half, you might be justified in having perhaps questioned the value of our community, questioned your commitments to our community. Uh, months of lockdowns, uh, social distancing, changing, uprooting your entire, entire social structure, family becomes more important, you have a smaller and smaller circle of people you're interacting with, uh, heck, if you're anything like me and you're an introvert, you're probably wondering, do I need other people? Right? And the fact that the world is on fire, quite literally, isn't helping. You know, we've got fires ranging everywhere from Oregon all the way across to Greece and Turkey and all around the world. And it's not just fires. We've got other kinds of climate disasters. Right? We've got hurricanes hitting the East Coast this week. We've got earthquakes, earthquakes happening, happening in Haiti. Um, you know... Mother Nature is no longer tapping us on the shoulder. She's kind of hitting us over the head with a sledgehammer, and we don't seem to be doing enough. So that doesn't help your mood either. Uh, and also, we've got, of course, political turmoil. We've got assassinations. We've got refugees fleeing totalitarian regimes. Uh, we've got problems. Okay. Uh, and so it can, it can be very, very easy to forget that, that, that there's, there's actually a lot of amazing, great, fun stuff cool stuff and really wonderful things happening around the world. Let's start with the fact that in, in labs all around the world in record time, several different groups of people worked their butts off uh, to produce not one, but several vaccines for a worldwide pandemic. And by all accounts, they're working, right? Uh, we just need to get out there. We have a lot more work to do, but we're never going to know these people's names. They made that contribution. They made that sacrifice. And we know in our own communities, people are doing great things every day. They're helping out neighbors. They're donating money. They're doing wonderful things. But then we, we keep, keep turning on the news, news and, and you know, the, the news, news doesn't, doesn't like to tell us that stuff, stuff too much. Once in a while, you get a picture of a dog, you get a cute story here at the end of the newsreel. Uh, but most of what we're watching is all doom and gloom all the time. And, and we, we know, know that, that the reason for this uh, now is, of course, good old-fashioned negativity bias. For those who aren't familiar with negativity bias, uh, it works like this. <clears throat> if you take two pieces of news, one that should have an equally positive impact and one that should have an equally negative impact. Say, like, okay, uh, you look at your weather report and you tell some people it's going to be five degrees warmer and you tell some of the people it's going to be five degrees cooler. And depending on whether you like hot or cold, right, that should affect you negatively or positively, but not any stronger in either direction. What we found is that the negative ones definitely have a greater emotional impact. You will feel sadder, angrier, scared, more scared, given an equally negative thing to an equally positive thing. Uh, also, that effect will last longer, so you'll be sad, angry, scared longer than you would be happy. 
And the most, most important one, the third one, is that it will have a stronger one, third influence one on your decision it, making. In other words, it turns out that giving you 24 hours a day of bad news, bad making news, you scared, angry, you sad, scared, is actually, really, sad, really, really, actually really good for the really advertising good. business. Who knew? Who knew? So, so this, this is where I come back, back to that, to that question, question I had earlier. Do I need other people? And the answer for me, at least, and I hope for all of us, is yes. Because the only way to break out of negativity bias, that nonstop cycle of what you're watching and what you're reading, is to get out into the world and actually meet the real people who are out there in your life. Uh, get beyond your little circle of five people who are reading the same news and actually have discussions with people that you don't always agree with. And what you find when you get out into the real world is that the reality is very different from what you get off of Twitter and off of Facebook and off of YouTube. The reality is that there are good people everywhere and they're making an effort to get through this thing, whatever it is. And so we're gonna to have to recommit ourselves to community in a safe way, in a way that's possible. We've got a long way to go with this pandemic, but whenever questioning, uh, are these conferences still gonna be going on? Are people still gonna to care to get together and do things? I think the answer is a resounding yes. And so what do we mean by community in the first place? In the broadest sense, for me anyway, community just means a group of people who share a common interest, right? So you meet people like motorcycles, people who like, you know, books, and so on and so forth. I don't know the exact name for our community, what you call it nowadays, but something like the Apple iOS enthusiasts or work you know, professionals community, whatever you want to call it. You know, uh, sorry to the watch OS fans out there. Uh, but our community is really a subset of a larger community of computer enthusiasts, right? People who like computers. That would include all the folks who like Rust, Go, and Windows, and yes, even Linux. Uh, you know, people are into other things. And that's a much larger group that we're a subset of. And really, uh, folks get into this particular group through different means, right? Some of us are developers, some of us are designers, uh, some of us are marketing, and yes, in our community, we do have salespeople. Thank goodness, that's why we're making money, okay? So all of these different groups, if we go to the Uber group, if you will, the, the NS object of all groups, right? the superset uh, is the human race. And this is really important to remember because that means that all communities start with people. All, pe all communities include people. And that means if we're going to be in a community and participate in that community, we're going to have to make a few imports to our code, right? We're going to have to import our empathy. We're going to have to import our inclusivity so that people don't feel left out. We're going to have to import our open-mindedness in understanding that we don't always agree and sometimes people can be wrong and we can live with that. And we have to import our common courtesy. Now more than ever, we need to say hello and goodbye and do whatever our customs are uh, to remind each other that we're people, okay? And I know this, at this point, there's a few people in the room saying, but you know, I got into this, I got into the whole computer racket because I don't like people. I want to live in my cave, right? I want to spend all day down in the basement working and not talking to people. I want to talk to the computer because the computer never talks back. And I'm sorry, even if you're an indie developer out there building everything on your own, doing all your design, doing all your marketing, uh, you know, putting everything out there, you still have customers, right? right? There's no escaping the people factor, the squishy stuff. There's no way around it. Sorry, I hate to inform you. Or as James Dempsey might say in one of his songs, uh, these are not optional. Okay? So. Main topics I want to talk about today. First and foremost, if we know this negativity bias exists, how do we overcome it? How do we get out of that mindset of everything is circling the drain? It's really important. Secondly, we want to talk about analyzing our contributions to the community. What we put out there into the world, are we making things worse? Are we adding or subtracting, right? Finally, uh, I want to talk a little bit about amplification. Which voices need amplifications and more importantly, which ones don't. Okay, so. Let's talk about getting out of this negativity bias. When I was studying to be a high school English teacher back in the Stone Age, I would get the same piece of advice from every single one of my professors. These were all veteran teachers, people who had been in the field, worked 20, 30 years in high schools. They ended up working at universities to train other teachers. And the one thing they all said without question, and the one thing they all said was stay out of the teacher's lounge. 
I'm 20 years old. I'm 20 years old. I've been in a teacher's lounge. Teacher's lounge, lounge right? Right? It's just a room it's just full, a of full of people. Right? People, right? People, right? People, right? What's the problem? Why would I do that? The way I look at it, that's a room full of experience. That's a room full of people who have been at this thing and they have so much knowledge and I can ask them questions and I can go in there and get all these great stories and I can figure out how to do my job better. Why wouldn't I want to stay in the teacher's lounge? And the problem is that's how you view the teacher's lounge when you're green and new, right? That is not how a 20 year veteran teacher views the teacher's lounge. A 20 year veteran walks into the teacher's lounge because they need to vent, right? The kids suck, the parents suck, uh, all the rules suck, the principal sucks, my administration is driving me bananas, the government keeps trying to tell me how to do my job. It is a nonstop rant fest when you're in that lounge. And that's understandable because you can't do that job if you don't let off a little steam every once in a while, you just can't, okay? And if this sounds familiar to you, well, guess what? It's, you know, we have our own teacher's lounge, right? You'll find it every time you open your Twitter feed, and yes, you'll find it whenever you open your favorite podcast player. There's no shortage of ranting going on in our community, none whatsoever. I could spend three weeks just reading the last two days worth of arguments that are going on. Uh, people complaining about this or that. Apple sucks, my customers suck. Uh, these other developers are making their prices too low and I can't compete my business and so on and so forth, All right? And then the occasional mattress ad. <laughs> All that venting, though, is a problem because when you vent toxins into the atmosphere, what happens? Other people have to breathe that air, right? And all those young, new, fresh people who are in the community, they're excited, and they want to be involved, and they want to feel welcome, and they walk into that room and woof, right? And it'd be one thing if people just left at that point, and a lot do, and that's horrible, but it turns out that breathing toxins, kind of addictive, right? We've known this for many years. And the more you breathe that toxic air, the more you start going, mm, this, this feels good. Let me, let me talk about how much things suck too, right? It's that good old negativity bias working its way into your system. And it makes you very, very jaded. It's, it's sort of like the dark side of the force, right? It's not stronger, but it is quicker, more seductive, right? And you could fight that and you could try to get yourself back to the light side, if you will, to a more positive attitude, to a, to a more, I don't wanna say, you know, helpful <laughs> version of yourself into the community. Uh, but hey, it's a lot easier to just hate and just keep hating and hating and hating and hating. I hate everything, right? You start hating change, you start rejecting anything new. And even worse, the more you dig into this and the further you go down this path, everyone who isn't this is a fanboy, right? Everyone who tries to suggest that it isn't all bad and terrible suddenly becomes the enemy. Because how dare you mess up my worldview? You know, everything sucks. It has to suck. Otherwise, I got to rethink my whole life, right? Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw something at you see, see what you think of this, okay? We're going to see you just think about your first gut level reaction when you hear the next statement. Ready? I love the touch bar. It is my favorite new input device that has been developed by any technology company in the last five years. I love it. I, used this, I was using this last night in my hotel room while I was editing some audio. Okay. Everybody still alive? We're okay? Okay? Nobody, nobody you know, got hurt from that, right? Now, I imagine some of you were like, oh, okay, I can tune this guy out for the rest of the rest of the day. All right, okay, I lost you, that's fine. All right. Then there's some of you in there going, well, he's not. All right, whatever, to each their own, right? It's not no skin off my back if you like that, sure. And then there's like the two people in the room and out there in the internet right now, we're going, oh, thank God, I'm not the only one. We can tolerate it. You know, more, more than one opinion. opinion. Have you ever wondered what our rant fests on Twitter and our podcast sound like to two people who are just buying their first Mac? To people who just got their first job at Apple weren't really following Apple before, but now they're like all excited to be on the team, you know, and they confront this. You can imagine how many people just forget this and walk away, and other people, other people in the need to conform will say, oh, I guess that's what we do here. And then they just start piling in as well, right? So I want us to <laughs> consider more often the effects of what we do every day when we're out there in the community. So let's talk a little bit about how we can analyze these contributions. I like to play a little game called, is this addition or is this subtraction? I don't mean, is this positive or is this negative? It's more, is this helpful? 
is this forcing the debate? Is this making us a stronger, better community, or is this just serving some other purpose that doesn't really help? Right. So I'm going to throw out some examples, a couple of things that I found just in the last week on Twitter and YouTube, uh, and you can decide for yourself whether you think these things are helpful or harmful. I'll add a little bit of commentary, but you know, do it on your own. This was a title to a YouTube video that I saw recently. Um, for starters, uh, <laughs> I, I will I will put this out there. I am not 100 percent comfortable with the whole CSAM detection thing. I'm not sure where I stand on it at this point. I do know, however, that it has nothing to do with the iPhone 13. But iPhone 13 is going to get more clicks than iOS 15 would. Uh, and I also know that when the average person hears Apple plans to scan your phone, what do they, what do they think of? Literally, a guy at Apple looking at every one of your pictures, right? Which is not at all how the technology works. Uh, and then my favorite part, the report you to the police. Well, yeah, if you have 30 pictures of illegal kitty porn on your phone, yes, they will report you to the police. But they're not going to report you to the police because that's not you, right? So, again, is this helping or is this just trying to get views? Here's an interesting one. Uh, many of you know that the uh, friends at uh, One Password recently uh, put out a preview release, it's not even the final version of their Mac app, and they switched it over to Electron, and this obviously caused a big stir. Rightfully so. Uh, there are definitely concerns there. But I really love this one because you know, this person starts off with respect. Hey, I know this is hard. Uh, I know you're not intending to do something wrong, but I'm, I'm just not on board with you on this decision. It's directed at the people at Agile Bits, including uh, one of the lead programmers and you know, this is as Tom Hanks would say, this is how you gripe, right? I suppose it may be something like this. Yeah, how helpful is, is this sort of thing? How would you feel if you worked on the team that built the Electron app? You've never worked on a Mac app at all in your life. Uh, you were proud of all the work you did, and then you woke up one morning and read this. Here's another one of my favorites. I get this myself, but I also this one was directed at a friend of mine. Um, you know, when you're when you're reducing the name calling and you don't have any facts left, you lost the argument. And then there's there's these lovely tweets that I see every once in a while in my feed, and this is like getting a dog picture or a guinea pig picture in my in my feed. Uh, it's just it's just awesome. I never want to tell this person, hey, keep up the great positivity. You're really this is wonderful because I don't want to pressure them to feel like they have to be positive all the time. I rant on, on the internet. I, you probably, if you looked at my feed right now, I probably tweeted something bad in the last day or two. Um, so I don't want to put that pressure on people, but at the same time, I, I would like people to know like this stuff really lights me up. Um, because you're just putting out a good vibe in the world. There's nothing wrong with that. So what are we looking for when we're doing this exercise? Why do we do this? Uh, first of all, we're looking for the intent. What is this person trying to do? In many, many cases, like the YouTube example, they're just trying to get clicks. Right? They're trying to rile you up to sell you something. Do you like being manipulated that way? I don't, right? Other times the intention is good, maybe they're just extraordinarily frustrated, right? And I often look for these as sort of like, is this a one-off thing where this person just had a really bad day or is this a pattern? Is this something they do every single day? Is this turning into a nonstop rant fest? In which case that's what the mute button is for, right? So you can look for those patterns because everyone's entitled to vent every once in a while. Everyone's entitled to just be frustrated and just let it all out. Um, but, you know, try not to do it every day. And finally, it, you know, some people are just seeking validation. They're out there hoping that someone, quote unquote, more important than them will notice that you're on board with their opinion, right? These people aren't adding or subtracting, they're just kind of taking up space, right? And why do we do this? Well, first off, I found, for me anyway, that this really, really helps me to empathize with both the person sending it <laughs> and the people who might be on the receiving end of it. I had a problem for many years where I would, I, I'm as guilty as anyone of the trying to correct someone who's wrong on the internet thing. Uh, and I had friends who staged an intervention and they said, Joe, you got to stop. <laughs> like, it's not helpful. I know you're trying to do the good right thing, but they didn't ask for your opinion. They just wanted to you know, vent. So I find if I can approach my Twitter feed with some analysis, like from an objective standpoint or from a intellectual standpoint, I don't get as emotional. And it keeps me from opening my mouth where I should. You know, sometimes the best thing to do when you're in a community is to shut the hell up and let other people talk. 
So it really helps me with that. So and it really helps me you know, with that. It's good and practice for when I'm about to hit the send I'll button. I'll do, do the same thing to my own tweet that I'm about to write and say, is this adding or subtracting? Is this going to help or am I just contributing to the noise? Something to consider. So finally, let's talk a little bit about amplification. We live now in the world of the Marvel Cinematic Multiverse, which provides us with no shortage of heroes from which to choose. You can choose whichever ones you like best. I am a big fan of Crocodile Loki myself. But I'm going to suggest something bold here, that in the real world, heroes are human, and therefore, maybe we don't want to have heroes. Humans are flawed. Humans do things we wish they wouldn't do. And attaching ourselves to the person is problematic for a number of reasons. The first of which is <laughs> a lot of terrible people invent great stuff. I mean, I, I'm not going to name names, but you know who we're talking about. There's a lot of people out there who are just not decent people, but they do amazing things. I mean, let's start with like Henry Ford, right? Uh, yeah, there, there are lots of people who are not admirable and they happen to do a great thing. It's like, well, then go use the thing they did, but don't necessarily connect yourself to them personally. Even if they're not all bad people, at some point they're going to do something or you're, there, something is going to happen, is going to come out in their past that they did or something in the future that they do that is completely indefensible. And if you have been putting their poster on, on your wall for years, you're going to find yourself in that awkward position of trying to defend someone for something that should not be defended. I've seen it happen. Many, many, many of my friends trying to defend people who are just being total crap that day or doing a thing that they shouldn't be doing. And so I don't think it's a great idea to necessarily attach ourselves emotionally to other people this way. It also creates this hierarchy within our community, right? Some people are more important than others. They did this great thing, therefore they're up here and we're down here. And now I have to try to vie to get their attention and they don't care about me because they're just trying to live their lives. And it's, you know, I don't, I went through this in high school. I don't want a cool kid's table. I want everyone to be having a good time, right? And finally, my favorite reason not to have heroes is, uh, you ever notice that sometimes when someone does something cool once, they become immediately the authority on everything? It's like, okay, you made this cool thing for the iPhone back in 28, you know, and that's awesome, but that doesn't mean you're an immunologist now. <laughs> it doesn't mean you're an expert on all things, even Apple, right? It just means that you kind of did a cool thing once, and that's okay, why can't we just celebrate that? So what's the alternative to having heroes? Well, the alternative is to amplify the things that are happening in the community, the events, the deeds, if you will, themselves instead of the people. And I'm going to give you a few examples of things that I think are going unsung or at least less, getting less appreciation than maybe they deserve in the community right now. You haven't heard of the underdog devs. This was started by... Yeah, this is an incredible organization. It was started by Rick Walter, and uh, it's, if you don't know what they do, uh, he'll be the first one to tell you, by the way, this is a group effort. There's so many people involved in it at this point. But basically the idea is you know, taking people who have made a mistake, uh, gotten incarcerated in some trouble, they have a felony on their record, they got out of prison, they served their time, they did their debt to society, and now they have limited job options. And so what this group does is it tries to get people trained in technology, technology so that they can go get a really good job and feed their families. And that's pretty cool. They even just started a program recently where they're going to give a stipend to people so that they can actually quit their full time. You know, you know, again, we've, we've seen this, right? You see people are working full time, really, really difficult, hard labor jobs, and then at night trying to take care of their kids and learn Swift, right? Not, not exactly the easiest thing in the world to do. Uh, so again, they're providing stipends to help people quit their jobs and be able to uh, afford to go to school and learn how to code. That's an amazing organization. You should check them out. Uh, there's conferences like this one, right? Uh, what John and Nicole do, and Natasha over at Try Swift, the folks at Ray Wenderlich, so many more uh, who have done conferences. They provide spaces for us to actually interact, for us to meet each other. How do we not thank them? How do we not thank you know, the fact that these places exist? How do we not amplify these events as they're happening, even if we're not going to attend? Right? John is famous for saying this all the time. You know, hey, even if you can't make it, just retweet for me, do something. <laughs> Get the word out, let people know that we are gathering in whatever way, capacity we can. We try to do it safely, but this is the only way out. We need to keep seeing each other in one form or another. Uh, there's the incredible community at Microdot Blog. We've got 
G. McDonald here, right? Who's G. McDonald here? Organizer there, right? Who's as helped me to there? Who, uh, who uh, originally started? Microdot started. I call this the anti-Twitter. The anti-Twitter. Not only do you own your own, content, you own your own content, awesome, which is pretty awesome, you post awesome, everything, and then it stays on your domain. So that if you want to pack up and go, you keep all the things that you posted. But more importantly, Gene and Matt over there created a community that is. I, I'm not kidding. It's the it, there's no negativity bias going on over there whatsoever. Every time I pop in there, I'm like, oh, this is pleasant. Why aren't why don't I come here more often? Uh, everybody's happy. They're smiling. They're offering advice to each other. They're sharing pictures. It's like it's it's just utopia. It's wonderful. Uh, and because they don't have ads to sell, they don't have to push the negativity bias. And it's a pretty cool community. If you haven't heard of it, you should check it out. Think about all the great. Contributors to Swift over the years, the people who are writing proposals, the people who are critiquing those proposals, you can do that. We can do that, right? Uh, I've, had, I've had friends who actually got things into Swift, right? So rather than complaining, hey, this API sucks, or hey, I hate the way this is written, they went and made it change themselves. They made a proposal and they made it happen. And that's pretty cool. And those folks don't get a lot of recognition, but they should. And finally, you know, the incredibly brave folks, the women and, and people of color and, and, and all kinds of folks out there who are pointing out the injustices in our community, the things that we're doing really wrong, right? Not all negative comments are a subtraction, right? Not all positive comments are a positive. Uh, so, you know, this is extremely important. These are the kinds of things we need to amplify. When we are getting it wrong, we need to tell each other and be honest with each other about it. And, and people, people have to have, have the courage, uh, you know, have, have to be, feel safe to have that courage to make that statement. In other words, we don't need to amplify people who are standing in front of a, you know, a wall of Marshall stacks turned up to 11. They have plenty of volume already. You're sticking your little Fisher Price microphone up to it isn't helping. Right? They're going to do fine. In Boulder, where I live, not far from here, we have these amazing ash trees. They're just gorgeous. gorgeous. We, we call it the urban canopy. canopy. Uh, I, I read recently that these ash trees are not native to Colorado. They weren't there when they settled the town and, and built the town of Boulder. Uh, what happened was people got, it was like much like the rest of Colorado. It was the Great Plains, right? And then you had the mountains, and the mountains had some pine trees, and that was it. And so folks said, well, there's a lot of sun here. Maybe we can create these, a little bit of shade by putting, lining our streets with these amazing trees. And they chose the ash tree, and they planted tons and tons and tons of these ash trees. And that was all well and good, and it's beautiful. Oh, and if you ever get a chance to visit Boulder, it's one of my favorite places on Earth. Uh, it's, it's just lovely, but there's a problem. This is the emerald ash borer. It's a teeny little bug that eats ash trees. <laughs> uh, poisons them, kills them off. And arborists and ecologists are severely worried that we're going to lose 50 to 60 percent of our ash trees in Boulder. Monocultures are not good. They're not good for any ecosystem, and that includes our own. We can't keep amplifying the same five people. We can't keep sharing the same voices. We need to hear from other people. You know, the next time you're going to create a podcast featuring two white guys with a microphone, think about that. I say this as a guy who has a podcast with two white guys with a microphone. I know I'm part of the problem. <laughs> but what are we choosing to amplify? What are we choosing to put out there in the world? Uh, we need the diversity, the inclusivity. So to wrap things up here, this community is worth our investment. We're a ragtag group of fun people, and uh, this, this thing is worth saving. I may have been a little bit distraught when I started thinking about what I wanted to talk about or whether or not I ever wanted to go to a conference again. Uh, but the more I remember the people that I've met here, the more I wanted to contribute. But we get to decide what community we want. We get to decide, to decide that if we help, help other people, people in the community, community to give people a hand, that helps all of us. It's not, it's not a zero-sum zero game. game. I don't have to gain in order, you know, I don't have to lose in order for you to gain. Right? Right. We, we can have a tide lifting all boats. We just we have to remember, remember to import our humanity. We have to remember to at least refrain, refrain from being in the teacher's lounge all day. All day. Right? Right. I'm not going to be a hypocrite and tell you to stay out there on Twitter more than I should be. We need, we need to, to learn, learn to add instead of subtract whenever we can. can. At least we try to be part of the solution instead of the problem. Uh, uh, we, we need, need to, to avoid having heroes. heroes. Sorry, Cap. Uh, we, we need to remember what we learned, learned so that we can bend towards the light <laughs> and help. 
and we need to amplify and we need to smaller amplify voices that don't smaller always voices get their don't recognition, always get recognition or do recognition or do we need to we need to lift those people lift up. those people and if we do that if we do that then we, that, we could be, be inspired you know then we could yeah, be open, we could to, open change to change we won't be so opposed to everything that comes our way the new safari bar isn't that bad i promise you we could be open minded and accept that some people feel differently. And just because I don't like a thing, it doesn't mean it shouldn't exist. And most importantly, we can welcome each other into this community and welcome new people constantly into the community so that we can continue to grow and survive instead of getting destroyed by a, a beetle. So I want to thank you for listening to my words today. I hope that you are going to enjoy the rest of this show. We've got an incredible lineup of talks coming your way. Uh, I was reading through the blurbs earlier and it's just blown my mind all the stuff we're going to learn. It's going to be so much fun. Uh, I, I hope to get to talk to as many of you as possible here and those of you out in internet land as well. If you have questions and such, uh, you know, feel free to throw them at me all week and I'll, I'll, I'll answer what I can. So thank you so much. Enjoy the show.